happy already. I don't know about you, but I'm happy because there's resurrection Sunday. Oh, my God, my God. Resurrection Sunday. Oh, glory to God. We want to welcome everybody in the sanctuary to perfect these churches. Resurrection Sunday. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. And that's why you're here, because you know there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. Praise God. Praise God. And you out there in Cyber Sanctuary, this day is set aside just for you also. Because you know that he lives. And because you know that he lives, we want to welcome you to this service. And we want you to don't be afraid to chat and send little notes, oh God. Through your, through your cyber sanctuary, phone, computer, whatever, you know, uh, because we're looking forward to hear from you and your tags and whatnot. Oh, God's a wonder of myself. Uh, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor and give your name, praise and glory. There's none like you in all the earth, oh God. We look to you, O oh God, to the heavens, O oh God, from which cometh our help. Lord, we know that our help comes from you. Move, O oh God, in the midst of our service today. Move by your spirit, O oh God. Lift up, bow down heads. Strengthen the feeble knees, O oh God. Heal the sick, O oh God. Save souls, O oh God. O oh God, be with us, O oh God, as only you can. We give your name praise and honor and glory for all that you've done and going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Well, I hope the scripture for today we'll be reading Psalms 117. I know you just love it. So what's he talking about? You know you love this psalm. You know you love this psalm. I'm, I'm going to read it so you can see why you love it. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness is great towards us. And the truth of all the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. I told you, I told you it was just what you were looking for. The praise team was stuck up behind me, you see. They thought I didn't see them. But I saw them when they snuck up behind me. Since they snuck up behind me, I'm going to let them loose on you. Let's say amen for praise and worship. Hallelujah. Can you let out a shout of praise? Our Savior is risen this morning. Hallelujah. Come on and shout. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's risen. Hallelujah. Sovereign King, Holy Lamb. Come on, come on. Holy Lamb, Lord, we love you. Holy Lamb, we adore you. You sing for You are holy, 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 oh holy. 
God is good. And this is going to be a blessing to you today. We got here. Look, we're blessed to have a variety of ministries, part of this, of this special day, which is Resurrection Sunday. Amen. We're having special uh, things going on, and I want you to receive right now something that's very precious. It's precious to us, our children, because it's all done to the glory of God. So let's receive right now our liturgical dancers under the auspices of Sister Brittany Singleton. Let's say amen. There are people all around you, just think about it, people all around you who are ready to hear and respond to the gospel. Which of them don't know about Jesus? Which of them could care less about God? It's our job to befriend them, strike up conversations, spend time with them, listen to their stories, empathize with their struggles. Jesus was on a mission. We're on a mission. We're born again for purpose. Not just for ourselves, but to share what we have. And I'm telling you, the greatest gift you can give anybody is Jesus.
Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet Real big, real big eye. gradually go up higher and higher and higher to adults and that's what we saw today giving glory to God because it is all about the gospel it's all about the gospel it's all about the gospel I thank God for them they did a fantastic job and right now I want you to turn your attention to our video monster monitors for our announcements for today happy resurrection Sunday members and friends of perfecting church it is time for the perfecting news Perfecting Church will host baptism service next Sunday. If you desire to be baptized, please register via email at vparks at perfectingchurch.org. Keep abreast of all the happenings at Perfecting Church. Take a minute, pull out your phone and text PERFECTING to 833-294-0003. Never miss out on important information. Get ready, one and all, for a holy convocation. All roads lead to Arlington, Texas, as we plan for a powerful five days. Visit the PFI website at www.pfi.world for hotel and worship schedule information. Printed information is available in the corridor or by calling the church office. On-site registration will resume next Sunday. The last day for discounted group registration is April 12th, so don't delay. Join Bishop-elect Marvin Winans as he walks through the Word at Pastoral Bible Study, Tuesday at 11.15 a.m. and 7 p.m. We will see you in Bible Study. Back and even better, it's Ladies Day. Join elect lady Belinda Scott, Sister Cindy Flowers, and Evangelist Myra Williams, Saturday, April 13th at 10 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube for another great sharing as we discuss the power of connection. Save the date, Ladies Day is always great. Feel free to contact our offices at 313 313- 365-3787 if you have any questions. Have a blessed day. I want you to realize that Minister Christine Proctor is over our children's church. And let's say amen for her. She's doing an absolutely wonderful job. Amen. Amen. We want to say amen to her. She comes with our children. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, our children are here to present a few scriptures and some poems. Hallelujah. So let's praise God for our children who work so diligently to be here. Hallelujah. So now we have Javier Winston. He will be saying a scripture. Second Corinthian. Chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, for any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things be passed away. Behold, all things become new. Let's give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Next we have... Little sister Ava Robinson, she will be presenting a poem.
They took my Jesus, and they beat him up real bad, and they crucified him, and he bled, and he died, and they put his body in the tomb. But he didn't stay dead on the third day. The stone was rolled away. Jesus has risen. Did you hear me? Jesus is alive, 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 alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Wonderful. Great job, Ava. <laughs> Our next poem will be coming from sisters Aubrey and Abigail Paul. Jesus' love is like the sun, shining bright on everyone. Warm and kind, it lights our day, chasing all the clouds away. On Easter morning, he rose so high, just like the sun in the sky. He reminds us all with the loving ray, he's with us every single day. So when the sun beams from above, remember Jesus and his love. Bright and golden without end, he's our forever loving friend. Amen. Amen. Last but not least, we have the Amada Merrills, Ordame and Brother Oroje, bringing our scripture. Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Philippians chapter 2, verse 10 through 11. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for our children. Amen. Now we have our Kids of the Kingdom, which is directed by Sister Phoebe Scott. They will be coming with a selection. Amen. Praise 
Watch out, watch out. Don't mess with me. Watch out, watch out. Oh. Hey, 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 hey. Don't get nothing started here.
know one thing here at Perfecting Church. We are blessed. We are blessed, blessed, blessed. We're blessed with a fantastic choir. We're blessed with a fantastic praise department. We're blessed with a children's church. We're blessed with liturgical dances. Oh, our, the ministry here is flowing. It's flowing. It's flowing. And you ought to be here. If you haven't been here before, Cyber Sanctuary, you need to get out your chair. And you need to come to the house of God. And perfecting church is the place to be. Glory to God. We heard so many ministries today. But you know what? There's still one more. I said there's still one more. Hallelujah. 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 And that's our phenomenal youth department. They love the Lord. Pastor Daniel Norwood pours into them. And today, they're coming with a special presentation. They say it's special. Y'all look for something special. A special presentation. Let's show some love for the youth department as they come at this time. Now in them, receive the mass choir. Live, live, live. Live, live, live. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. How many know the earth, the ground, the rocks have a voice? Jesus said in Luke 19, 40, if these people should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. We are the PC Youth Readers Theater team, and we're going to present a piece entitled What the Stones Saw, depicting what was witnessed by the stones throughout the ministry and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We hope you are blessed by this what the stone saw. Stone, I lay in the wilderness. A wasteland, cold, barren, dry. I cover the landscape, large and small. Walking on me is hard. Very hard and painful on feet. His, His feet. feet. I see the one, Jesus, fasting for so long, hungry, tired, struggling. One day, the tempter attacks him again and again. It then grabs me. It shouts, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. The one pauses and then replies. The word of God is what sustains. Feeds. Satisfies. I am dropped, and the tempter fails. fails. I am being carried, gripped, hard. hard. The man holding me is running. With many others equally angry. Angry at her sinner, sinner in, in their, their eyes. eyes. The law fuels their chase. They corner her now. I am lifted high, ready to be hurled, but everything stops. The woman is with the, the one. one. He asks, whoever has not sinned can throw. I remain poised in the air. The hand that is gripping me slowly is lowered and I drop to the ground. Landing hard with many others who leave. The one and the woman see no one left to condemn. Mercy releases her into new life. I lay at the gates of Jerusalem. So many cheering, longing to see the one, Hosanna. His men push through the crowds, making room for his arrival. Others are not cheering, challenging voices, teachers of the law. Scold your followers, they cry. The one picks me up and offers it to the law. He says, if my people were silent, these very stones would, would cry, cry out. out. Cry out. I lay with others like me near a pool. Mud mixes with me. It becomes us. Nearby, a man. Blind from birth, struggles, forsaken, ignored until now. Now, the one sees the man. Truly sees him and has mercy 
He reaches into us. Preparing to glorify his father. His hand dives in, then pulling us up. His hand applies to the sightless eyes. His hand directs the man to the pool. Salam. Salam. To clean us away. And then sight. Restore. The father. Glorify. Mud. Stone. Washed away he. We now see. I am a road. Cobblestone. Connected with so many others like me. Witnesses to the many that have traveled on us. Some excited. Some searching. Some lost. The feet of Passover have walked on us this week. And now, at week's end, something different. different. Our road is now overflowing. The voices, the people, a mix now of anger and anguish. There was a trial, a beating, a sentence. And now the one approaches. His ragged feet trip along us. His burden leaves a mark on us. The wooden cross, cross. gouging into us. As it drags and bumps, it drains, drains life. life. He's past us now, and we've become crimson with the blood of, of a lamb. lamb. I am strong. Large. Solid. Unmovable. Soldiers, guards. Huddle around a fire talking of the day's events. They laugh as they recall. The preacher. They, they say, say. Claiming to be a king of these Jews. It took those other two long enough. Die. They lament having to guard the preacher's body, which is now. In a tomb behind me. I seal it tight. Unmoved. unmoved. The night stretches on. Soldiers snore. Suddenly, there is a. A strength. A strength that has enveloped me. A strength compelling me to move aside. I am no match and move. Wings, I hear light. I see the one walks, walks free. free. Dawn, soldiers awake, seeing me to the side. Looking in a tomb and yelling now. Leaders of the law and others arrive. Accusations, disbelief, they leave. Silence then, later. I am forgotten. But, but he, he is, is not. not. The one pushing past the stones. That we have placed in front of our own tombs. tombs. Only to be pushed aside with power. With might. Mercy. And new life like stones crying out in, in joy. joy.
Church, Bishop elect Marvin L. Winders. Come on and give God praise. Oh, now let's give God praise. Father, it is the entrance of thy word that bringeth light and life. We pray that the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ would shine bright here today, as always. May the people be blessed by thee and never impressed by me. Cause through the revelation of thy word these thy people to see you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and to follow you more nearly. And now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And every glad heart said amen. amen. He's great and he's greatly to be praised. I agree wholeheartedly with Elder Hubbard. We have a very talented church. Let's give God praise for our liturgical dancers, our choirs, our children, our youth, wonderful job. Now I don't have to do anything today. They've done such a wonderful job. Let's grab your Bibles and turn to Matthew, the 28th chapter. We want to welcome all those that are watching by way of streaming. And we know that you have been blessed and have enjoyed the services. This is the day. He got up out of the grave. Led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Hallelujah. We want to welcome all those from watching us all over the world. I want you to know we had a tremendous Good Friday service. Wow. So proud of all of our preachers, Minister Tommy, the Elder Zach, Pastor Haynes, and all of those from Revival Tabernacle. They did such a wonderful job. Let's give God praise 
for Pastor Golf. And if you say, what are you talking about? Don't worry about it. You have the opportunity to go to Facebook or YouTube and watch it. Just pull up the PC Good Friday service. We are in full convocation mode. I don't hear nobody hollering like they need to holler. I said we're in full convocation mode. We want everyone to join us in Arlington, Texas. If you have Matthew 28 and 18, indicate by shouting amen. amen. Matthew 28 and 18, hear the beginning of the reading of God's word. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Would you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. All, power. all power. Now, I need you to register that in your brain. I don't, I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't, I don't know what you're feeling. I don't know what is holding you captive. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you hear what I say? All power. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, all power. So delighted to see Tim and Debbie Ryman here today. Let's, Redmond, I'm sorry, let's give God praise. Ryman, yeah. Come on, let's give God praise for them. When I was in the back and I saw, I said, Lord, there go my members. Happy to see them today. God is just good. Really, I am just uh, overwhelmed with our young people, with our children. Hallelujah. From Sister Adame to, to Deuce to, that, I'm telling you, that, that, that Shia is something. She going she to tear some things up. Hallelujah to uh, little uh, Nina, what's her name? Ava, to Ava, and to, to my little preacher. Oh, we in good hands. The, the generation to come is gonna be blessed because of the seeds that we're sowing now. Hallelujah. So happy to see Brother Tennant here today. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just looking, noticing people. Let me, let, me get, let me get to work. Let me get to work here. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. There are several Greek words for the word power. We are most familiar with dunamis, and this one, which is exousia. And exousia, E-X-O-U-S-I-A, exousia, means in the sense of ability, privilege, that is subjectively force, capacity, competency, freedom, or masterly, master, mastery, superhuman, potentate, token of control. It's delegated influence. He has authority and jurisdiction, liberty, power, right, and strength. 
all power. The text reads, and Jesus came and spake unto them. He is now boasting. He is now declaring. A couple of days ago, he looked very weak. He was in the hands of the Roman citizens. He was in the hands of the Roman soldiers. He, he looked as if he was pathetic. But on the third day, he wants to make another statement. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All power. <laughs> That's what I kept hearing. When I was praying, Lord, what should I preach? I kept hearing the Holy Ghost say, all power. He says that all power is given unto me. Well, then that prompts the question, who gave him the power? Well, if we turn to John 3 and 35, we find these words. The Father loveth the Son and hath given all things into his hand. God gave him the power. Now, I need you to stay with me because it may get a little convoluted here. In the beginning, in John 3, the Apostle John writes that the Father loves the Son and hath given him all things or given all things into his hand. God the Father gave him all things. Yet Jesus does not declare this until after his resurrection. The power is something that God gives you, but you have to recognize when to exercise it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Father has given him all things. After Jesus has gotten up out of the grave, if you notice throughout his ministry, he always deferred to the Father. He would always say, the gospel that I have is not mine, but it is my Father's. The doctrine that I teach is not mine. It comes from the Father. Uh, the miracles that you see me do. I'm only doing what I saw my... All right, I was wondering, was y'all gonna help me preach? While he walked on earth, he gave deference and honor to the Father. But now that he has gotten up out of the grave, he says, all power has been given unto me. Well, the next question is, what is the range or the jurisdiction of his power? And this question is answered in the verse itself. His power is inclusive of heaven and earth. There is nothing, there is nothing that can move outside of the rule or the jurisdiction of the power of Jesus. I'm getting ready to preach Jesus here. Some people feel like, well, you know, that's just your truth. That's just what you believe. I don't believe in that. And therefore, it's not real. Oh, it's real. Brother Adame, he's getting tall. I used to tell him he wasn't tall enough, but he's getting tall here. Brother Adame told us that every knee is going to bow 
in heaven and in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You may not want to do it now, but oh, you're going to confess. No matter where you live, no matter your zip code, you cannot get out of the range of the jurisdiction of Jesus Christ. He's so high, you can't go over him. He's so low, you can't go under him. He's so wide, you can't go around him. You got to come in at the door. He has power in heaven and in earth. So no matter what you experience, if it's happening in heaven, he can handle it. <laughs> People are afraid. Oh, folk running to see the total eclipse. That's fine if you're into that. I ain't mad at it. But the point I'm making is he's in control of that. If it's on this celestial ball we call earth, he has jurisdiction over it. My soul says yes. While he was on the boat, the waves started blowing, the wind started blowing, the waves started raging, the billows were mounting high, and Jesus stood up on the hull of the ship and said, peace be still. Ended the whole situation because you cannot get outside of his jurisdiction. David wanted to run from God and said, where can I go that I might flee his presence? If I took the wings of the morning and flew to the utmost parts of the sea, when I got there, he'd be there. If I made my bed in hell, he's there. There's nowhere you can go to get outside of the jurisdiction of God. Look at your neighbor and shout all power. How did he receive this authority? How did he receive this authority? I'm, I'm glad you asked. If you go to Revelation, the fifth chapter, it gives us a very bird's eye view of what actually took place and why we ought to be shouting until they just make us sit down. Because God allowed John, the revelator, to enter into heaven. And in the fifth chapter, he's looking and he sees someone seated on the throne. And he has a book in his hand. And that book was sealed with seven seals. Nobody could look at the book, let alone take the book out of his hand. And when John recognized that my name is in that book, but I'll never know it because nobody can loose the seals. <laughs> nobody can open the book. John began to weep. And in that fourth verse it says, and I wept much. He's bawling. He's all out of himself because they did an APB and found no man worthy in heaven, nor in earth. They even looked up under the earth, still couldn't find anybody worthy to look on the book or loose the seals thereof. But then an angel came and tapped John on the shoulder and said, weep not. Don't cry, John. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And then they wrote a song about it and said in that ninth verse, and they sung a new song. 
saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. How did he do it? For thou wast slain and redeemed us to God by thy blood. That was the only way he could get the book. I know this whole Calvary thing seems like an unnecessary bloody mess. But if he had not shed his blood, there would be no remission of sin. We would all be lost. But the reason he looked so weak is because he had to give up his blood. The reason he looked so pathetic is because they didn't take it, he laid it down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I never will forget in the, in the 80s when uh, uh, Sugar Way was fighting, what was the Mexican guy? Roberto Durant. And after Roberto had whipped him, won the first fight, they had another fight. And, you know, they say, I, I had nothing to do with it, but Sugar Ray came out and was doing his thing, and all this, and, and at the end, before the fight ended, Roberto Duran didn't come out. He just said, no mas. No mas. In other words, I'm not fighting. Oh, Lord. I'm trying to hold up here. And folks was mad. He threw the fight. He couldn't. They just, they just fixed it. So Sugar Ray, all that. Y'all can talk that later. But what I'm trying to get you to see is that when the Romans came after Jesus, he was standing in Pilate's court. And Pilate said, you the king? He said, you say I'm the king. He said, but uh, if, if I had some folk down here, my soldiers would come and fight. Lord have mercy. I would have legions come down and get me out of here. But what I'm saying is, no mas. I'm not going to fight this. I, all right, maybe I'm just happy, just me and Brother Daniel. Look at your neighbor and say, no mas, no mas. In other words, God said, I'm not going to try to prove who I am. I'm going to take this. Ah, I'm going to lay my life down. No man takes my life. But I lay it down. And if I lay it down, I'm going to pick it back up again. Would you shout at me? No mas, no mas. And I know the writers of history made Jesus look real bad because of that fateful day. But he wasn't worried about the laying down of the life. He knew that the blood was faultless and without sin. And because he laid it down, because he laid it down, his blood could redeem us Notice what it says in Revelation. Thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So all this nonsense about the blacks being the only Hebrew real Israelite, that's nonsense. And I don't have any problem telling any of them that's nonsense. And don't you get caught up in that nonsense. Jesus' blood was for every nation. Without impartiality, every nation, every tongue, every people, every kindred. He died for everybody. And now that he has done that, we know he got the power from the Father. We know that there is no jurisdiction of his range. And we know how he got it. 
He had to die to get it. Look at your neighbor and say, I was expensive. I know you may not think I'm much, but tell him I was expensive. I, I cost Jesus his whole life. And now, and I'm finished. And now that he's gotten up out of the grave, he makes a statement. All power. You may think you have power, but he got all the power. I, I was born in America, I live in America, and I'm happy to be an American, and I want you to vote. But your ability to vote does not override Jesus' ability to have all power. As a matter of fact, he said promotion doesn't come from the east or the west. Doesn't come from the south. Promotion comes from the Lord. One writer said he sets up and he takes down. He's in control. I'm getting ready to give up this mic, but I, I want you to leave here knowing that he is able, he has the competency, he has the capacity, he has the freedom to do it, he has the mastery of it, he's superhuman, he has the authority of every jurisdiction. So no matter where you find yourself, you are never without hope or help because Jesus has all the power. I said he has all the power. I said he has all power. So don't you ever face anything else in life and feel defeated. Jesus went through the grave to come out on the other side of the grave with all power. Now, I know I'm just trying to end, that's all. That folk want to give praise to the enemy and say they want to talk about black power, black magic, white magic, satanic power, political power, economic power. But I want you to understand God has all yes I said he has all power whatever situation you find yourself in all you gotta do is talk to God cause he has all power you may be in a jail you may be bound you may be in prison, but you have to do like Brother Paul and Silas and just start praising him. Praise him in the midst of your struggles. Praise him with tears running down your face. Praise him while they're lying on you. Praise him while they have you bound. Ah, Lord, because he got all power. I said he has all power. And he has exousia. Somebody shout exousia. Which means he has the authority to get you out of whatever you're in. Can I get somebody to testify with me. You're not here because the devil let you go. You're here because he had all power. He walked into where you were. 
and snatched you out of the hand of the enemy. Oh, power! Some of you strung out on drugs, but the drugs couldn't stop the power. Some of us wrapped up in lust, but the lust couldn't stop the power. Some of us born in false religions, but they couldn't stop the power. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. I heard Paul write in that same scripture. He said, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He's got to make you free I just need somebody to turn around and say power I'm getting kind of happy now. Thank you, Jesus. Because when I'm facing the judge, the judge may think he has power to rule over my situation. But what he doesn't understand is that while he's talking to me, I can be talking to the judge that has the real power. And while he's saying what he thinks he's going to say, The Bible said that the heart of the king is in the Lord's hand. He turned it wherever he, I feel the anointing. I don't know who I'm prophesying to. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you're in, God is getting ready to turn it. Ah, He got all power. from there because it's not over yet I know what the devil has said I know what the doctor has said I know what the report said but God got all power Everyone's standing. I'm happy this afternoon that I serve a God that's not limited. You can take the limit off of him because he got all power. Oh, I said he got all power. He got power for the little stuff. He got power for the medium-sized stuff. He's got power for the big stuff. He got power for the impossible stuff. Would you help me preach? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I declare to you today, God's got all power. Now, I I want you to try that one more time. But this time, I want you to do it with the situation that you're in. Whatever situation that is. It could be a family situation, a marital situation, a financial situation. It could be an educational situation. Whatever situation you're in, that it looks like it has you locked in it. Include whatever you're facing right now. Look at that neighbor and say, neighbor, did you hear what I said? God got all power.
and I've flown over three million miles on one airline. But when I'm flying and it hit a turbulence or hit a bump, I don't worry about it. Cause God got all power in the heavens. Y'all not hear what I'm saying. Lord, uh, he got all the power. If you believe it, give him praise. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're dealing with, you don't be, need to be afraid. I have a tape of my great-grandfather preaching and praying. He only had a third-grade education, and the Lord had to teach him how to read. But he was praying and he said, Lord, we're powerless. You've got all the power. <laughs> Just look up toward heaven and say, in the, in the dialect of my great granddaddy, say, Lord, you've got all the power. If you're here today and you say, I, I want to confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I want you to come now. I want you to come now. People, if you praise God, they will come. I want you to come now. Is there one that says, I will give my life to the Lord today? Hallelujah. You don't have to worry about how you're going to get out because he's got all the power. You don't have to worry about if folk going to hold you down because I need somebody to praise him with some joy. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Today is your day. Resurrection is your day. He's got all the power. If you're in the balcony, we'll wait. Elder Healing. Come on, today's your day. Come on, today's your day. We waiting on you. You don't have to be ashamed. 
You don't have to be afraid. God is waiting on you. Come on, give God praise. They're coming. They're coming. Hey, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. He's got the power. He's going to turn it around. Hallelujah. They're still coming. Hallelujah. Come on and give God some praise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're still coming. They're coming. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let him set you free. Let him deliver you. Allow him to bring you out of what you in. Come on, if you're in the balcony, you still got time. God is moving. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Move by your power. They're still coming. So they're still coming. You're still praising God. You got to get excited about what he's doing. Leaving it at the altar. Yeah, yes. God is moving. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord.
Now everybody just give God praise. Open your mouth. Shout. Listen. All of you that have come down here, raise your hand. Our follow-up department, I want you to follow them. They're going to give you some information and let you back into the service very quickly. Just follow them. I want everybody that's in this sanctuary that knows what it is to have Jesus come into your life. I want you to give God praise for all of these souls. Y'all ain't happy enough. Come on, come on. Somebody holler all power. All right, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Our ushers are coming. We wouldn't dare want to close this service out without giving you an opportunity to give. We all tithe here at Perfecting Church I said, we all tithe here at Perfecting Church. I'm going to give you one more chance. I said, we all tithe here at Perfecting Church. Want everyone to sow. Want everyone that can and will to sow a seed of $30. You can give more. But I want everyone to at least strive to do that. If you need an envelope, our ushers are, are moving swiftly and they're smiling. They do. Delight in the opportunity to serve you. We all tithe. The tithe is the tenth of every dollar. Hallelujah. It's the dime of every dollar. And it doesn't change because the dollars increase. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Maybe he's a mighty good God. He's a mighty good God. Just have a seat, Sister Sylvia. You're going to be all right. Just sit down. God is good. He's, he's in control. We want everyone to participate. Hallelujah. It's a joy to give. I delight in giving. I was talking to my son as he has started a work in Los Angeles. He's been calling, we've been talking, sharing. And I just praise God because 
You put it in them, it's going to come out of them. <laughs> Glory to God. And he was calling to ask me about tithes. And I was just listening to him. He said, you know, I've always done it. But I just asked God to give me a revelation. So that's good. I told him, but until you get it, keep giving. Yeah. <laughs> when he went to saying what the Lord had given him, I said, that sounds mighty good. I want you to understand that God only has one way. I don't hear nobody talking to me. I know we're trying to make up several different ways, but God only has one way. He says, give and it shall be given unto you. And I'm not afraid to tell you to give because I give. Are you listening to me? I want everyone that is watching how to give is appearing on your screen. And I want you to sow this Resurrection Sunday 2024. Everyone standing, stand with joy that you're going to give into the kingdom. Lift it up. Father, we honor you. We thank you for the opportunity to give. We stand amazed at your ability to take so little and to do so much with it. Bless now both gift and giver according to their faithfulness and according to their cheerfulness. For it's not as a debt I owe, but as a seed I sow. And if you know that God has great things in store for you, and this is a little seed, but it's gonna grow into something great, holler back at me, not as a debt I owe but as a seed I sow. And if you know from experience ah, that he got all the power, shout not of the dead I owe, but as a seed I sow. Move your offering down to the end. The person on the end, please remain standing. You have the opportunity to gather all of the gifts of your role and stay there. Hallelujah. Come remain standing till the finance department comes and retrieves the seeds that have been sown on your road.
success. To that power. That means that there's nothing that's going on in your life that's not too hard for God because he's got all power. Amen. Perfecting Church loves visitors. Let's give a big round of applause for all our visitors today. We also want to acknowledge all our first-time visitors right now. If you are visiting for the first time, would you please stand? All first-time visitors. First time. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Praise God, praise God. First-time visitors, remain standing. I ask you to remain standing, remain standing, remain standing. Stand just a little bit longer. Someone from Perfecting Church is going to give up and show you some love from the house. Amen. Daniel Wallace, serving as your voice of perfecting, here to give you information on additional announcements and activities happening here at Perfecting Church. Are you a small business owner desiring to do business with the city of Detroit? Well, we have an opportunity for you. Our political relations department has partnered with Councilwoman Mary Waters to offer a special workshop, the Minority Business Procurement Workshop, which will be held on Saturday, April 13th, from noon to 2 p.m. This event will be held in our JMAC building, which is located directly behind the church on Nevada and Van Dyke. Meet our political relations department so you can sign up for this spot. S excuse me, sign up for this event and secure your spot. You don't want to miss this opportunity. Amen? Amen. We regret to announce the passing of Irma Means, mother of our own brother, Brian Tatum. Services will be held this Friday at, here at Perfecting Church. The family hour will begin at 10 a.m. and the funeral services at 11 a.m. Please show your support for this family by praying for them and bringing your presence to the funeral. And to all of our wonderful visitors, we thank you so much for worshiping with us today. You may say, hey, this is where the Lord will have me to be. We want to invite you to join Perfecting Church and we will now bring up our pastor, Bishop-elect Marvin L. Winans to extend the invitation. Hallelujah. If there's someone here that says, hey, I want to join a church like this. I have children. I need them to be in an atmosphere that is healthy. If there's anyone here today that says, I want to join Perfecting Church, you can come now. People, if you praise God, they will come. See there? Come on. Come on. Act like you want them to join. If you're in the balcony and you want to join, we'll wait for you. What a church. What a church. Anyone else? Come on, they're coming. Come on, if y'all praise God. What is your name, sir? Stephen Richardson. Stephen Richardson. You're the one that I saw the other week. All right. Let's say amen for Steve Richardson. And what's your name? Deborah Farmer by way of Mrs. Motherboy. Huh? Deborah Farmer by way of Motherboy. Deborah Farmer by way of Motherboy. All right. Well, I'm Pastor Winans. Huh? My cousin's Natasha and I'm All right. Who are these beautiful young ladies? What's your name? Ava. Ava who? Ava Buckner. Ava Buckner. 
Buckner? All right, and you are? Yana Buckner. Yana Buckner. And what's your name? I'm Sorrel Brinsar. Sorrel? Sorrel. Sorrel. Sorrel Brin. Sorrel All right. And, and, oh my goodness. What is your name? Avea. Who? Avea. Avea. That's a beautiful name. Like Ave Maria's. What's your name? Siobhan. Siobhan, who? Siobhan. You have some fans. What is your name, sir? Jonathan. Jonathan who? And who is this beautiful young lady? Nyla. You don't, Nyla, okay, I got you. I'm Pastor Winans, and this is Lady Denise. We're here for your spiritual growth and development. We only have one kind of member here at Perfected Church. What kind of member is that? Lift your hands, lift your hands. Father, as we lay our hands upon them, we pray that the anointing that is upon this ministry will be transferred to their lives. Let the glory of the Lord, let the glory of the Lord be revealed in their lives. Anoint and set free. Make whole in the name of the Lord Jesus. We give you praise. We thank you for who you are and for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, come on, throw your arms around them and welcome them to. Come on, come on, church. Welcome them to perfecting. today but you can worship with PC again as today's service will be rebroadcast at 3 p.m. Amen. I know, I know y'all talked a whole lot of folks waiting for the summer shut up and just the benediction. Father in the name of Jesus we ask you to bless these our people that will keep them covered with your blood. We thank you for the word today oh God and how it was you that sent it oh God and we receive it in the name of Jesus. Bless the man of God that delivered, oh God. We replenish him in all the strength that he has defeated. Do it in the name of Jesus. We have a praise as you watch over these our people. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.